Setting up a resource rule for Salesforce in Identity as a Service. Resource rules define how a group of users access an application resource. They are defined in the Resource Rules page, which is available through the hamburger menu. Select Resources, Resource Rules to view all resource rules defined by application. In the Resource Rules page, any applications that require a resource rule are listed, along with any resource rules defined. There are already two IDAS portal applications with resource rules defined, one for the administration access to the admin portal, and one for the users to access their self-service. In this demonstration, we will show how to set up a resource rule for the newly defined Salesforce application. In the resource rule definition, the rule name and description are listed. Resource rules can be applied to all users or just those in specific groups. If you have specific authentication or access requirements for a user population, it is best to define a group and apply the resource rule to that group. Don't forget users can be members of different groups. In our case, we will apply this resource rule to our entire user population, so all groups. In the Edit Resource Rules page, the authentication conditions are defined. The date and time settings allow you to define times when users can or cannot access the resource. An allow or deny during that time frame. Let's see how to find access to not be allowed on Saturday and Sunday. This will be a day of week recurring condition. We can define the start time and the days of the week. In our case, it begins at 12 a.m. on Saturday and is effective both Saturday and Sunday all day. Notice the date time bar now has an active dot. We will set the relative risk later. Next, let's look at how to define geolocation-based risk. The geolocation can restrict or allow based on the country the user is connecting from, selecting either allow or deny. We'll present a list of countries you can add. Click cancel as we will not save this risk factor. The source IP allows you to define IP as a risk factor. Here you can define any IP addresses that should be considered. Machine authentication, along with location history and travel velocity, are already active as risk factors, and we have defined these in separate policies. Once the risk factors are defined, the risk percentage can be assigned. In our case, the important risk factor is date and time, so we will assess that at 100% risk by sliding the dot on the bar to 100%. This means if someone is attempting to access Salesforce on Saturday or Sunday, they will be assessed at 100% risk. Otherwise, all other access attempts are zero risk. Scrolling down to the Authentication Decision section, Notice we deny access if the risk score is 100%. So, if they are attempting to connect on the weekend, the rules will deny them access. Also notice, if they present low risk, in our case logging in on non-weekend days, we will skip their password requirement and allow them to use any of the second factors listed that they have set up for authentication. If you want to disable single sign-on for this specific application rule, you can. As that is the only risk assessment we want to use, the resource rule can now be saved. Returning to the resource rules listing, the new rule for Salesforce access is now defined. To test this, go to My Profile page and see if Alice Admin can log in to Salesforce using the assigned application. In the Applications, the Salesforce tile will now be available because there is a resource rule for Salesforce that applies to Alice Admin. The authentication redirects to IDAS. If we are not already logged in, or if single sign-on was disabled, we would be asked to authenticate here, but Alice Admin is already authenticated, so she is logged into Salesforce automatically because single sign-on is enabled. Please see our library of support content or contact our world-class support team any time of the day, no matter where you are, for more immediate assistance.